So we're looking for people that have significant uh, educational uh, you know, background before they come to us. And frankly, what we have found over the last few years is that even though there are some, you know, really stellar education programs emerging, I know there's a program here at Clackamas County, uh, um, uh, Columbia Gorge Community College has a very good wind program. I'm, uh, I'm on the industry advisory committee for OIT's uh, Renewable Energy Engineering program. These are all great programs, but in terms of the volume of people, that this industry is going to need if we're going to meet our goals. It's nowhere near it. So what Vestas really does is we've made a, a pretty good commitment to doing our own training, our own you know constant training uh, of people. And if uh, if you're out by the airport, we actually have our own uh, training facility uh, out by the airport where we've got uh, a, you know a real nacelle where we do you know. On, on the uh, you know real real time simulator training on real equipment, and every technician that comes to Vestas, we pass them through series of trainings through that Portland location, uh, and you know it's some some day maybe there will be enough education programs that people will come and we'll be able to throw them you know in, into the job, but I don't think so. I think <clears throat> we're always going to have to do you know a lot of our our own training work. Um, you might have heard that although we have decided not to build factories here in Oregon, uh, we are uh, making a commitment to Portland as our North American sales headquarter going forward. So we will be leasing uh, a building, uh, the old Meyer and Frank warehouse uh, in the Pearl District of, of Portland. We're currently scattered among three or four different buildings, which isn't perfect, uh, and we want to get everybody into the same location. And we expect to be moving in in early 2012. Uh, I'm certainly uh, looking forward to it. It's going to be a lead platinum uh, uh, building, meeting very high sustainability <coughs> standards. Uh, I know there's been discussion of having solar on the building. You might ask about whether we're going to have one of our wind turbines on the building. At 112 meters, uh, that's not the kind of thing you put in an urban location. I mean, this is you need a lot of, a lot of room for an industrial scale wind turbine. So I'll just show you some pictures uh, of how we do what we do. You know, we still do some uh, ship transport. This is the city docks in Houston, Texas. Um, a big part of, uh, of our business is getting things to site, you know, on time and in good condition so that we don't have to do a bunch of field repairs. And we have designed a lot of our own transport equipment. Um, we have a pretty big presence right now in the port of Vancouver. Uh, much less so in the Port of Portland. Uh, you know, as some of you know, if you want to ship things through Port of Portland, you got to go down Route 30 uh, if you want to get to the interstate, and that just makes things <coughs> harder. We've uh, been uh, ma made to feel very welcome in the Port of Vancouver, and they've been a great partner for us. Um, we do a lot of train transport. Vestas, uh, I think, ahead of uh, some of the other manufacturers, really started building around rail. We own and lease, I think, upwards of uh, 100 rail cars, a lot of which, again, have been customized to uh, carry our stuff. Um, when you design a wind turbine at the engineering stage, a big part of what you have to think about is how you're going to get it to site, right? Blades are actually more of a challenge uh, than, than towers in some ways. You know, once blades reach a certain length, if you're going to transport a blade in one piece, how are you going to get it around the bends? So you really have to have a transportation planner that knows that rail system and that road system intimately in terms of what the turning radius is. You know, when a train turns, it tilts. Well, what happens if there's a train coming the other way? Right? These are the things that our, our transportation logistics people have to think through. Roads the same way. You got to know, you know, every overpass and every turn and every regulation too. You know, if the state of Wisconsin decides that they don't want heavy heavy freight going through town except during nighttime hours, well, that really changes the cost structure of what it's going to take to get all these components on site. Figure a hundred megawatt project might have thirty turbines. Each turbine's got four or five tower sections, three blades, the nacelle and a generator, and that, that's a lot of transportation. So again, I think a lot of people hear Vestas and they think of us as an energy company, 
And it's important to realize that we are a heavy manufacturing, logistics, construction, and service company. We don't sell energy. This is the kind of stuff that we think about and the kind of stuff we do. Uh, you know, construction projects, obviously a big part of, uh, of, of, of our business. Customer wants Vestas to install the project. We will do that for them. More often, the customer has their own general contractor, and Vestas uh, is an advisor to that general contractor. <coughs> why, why do we need to be so involved? Well, remember, we're on the hook for the warranty period, and we want to make very, very, very certain that everything has been installed to our spec. Right? So that's a big part of what our construction managers on site do, is making sure that the foundations are sunk correctly with the right materials, that the roads are built, the right materials, that the crane pads are set with the right materials, and that everything is set so that the project will operate uh, as it's supposed to. Obviously, uh, it's a fun job and it's an exciting job. You know, if you go back and forth between the two pictures, uh, you can be very hot and you can be very cold uh, at the same time. Uh, this is, um, I think this is the Wild Horse Project in Washington State. These are V80 turbines, 1.8 megawatts apiece. Uh, here's a further picture, and you can see obviously a lot of crane work going on. Um, Barnhart is one of our uh, construction partners that we uh, work with a lot. Um, again, you start to get a sense of why safety is really so important to a company like Vestas. You know, you mix construction and high voltage, and you have to be very careful with what you're doing. And there's no more cowboys left in our industry. This is serious stuff. Um, again, raising the blades. Maintenance and service, so, I mean, I threw this in here just to give you a sense of what doing service on a wind turbine means. Uh, many of these turbines have lifts inside, but not all of them do. So when I've gone up turbine, you know, climbing 80 meters, an 80 meter tower, climbing a 100 meter tower with, uh, you know, 25 pounds of safety harness and uh, whatever tools you need. and. Uh, we really, really hate it when people drop things for safety reasons. But if you have to don't go down and get it, well, that's not much fun either. I mean, I'm like making light of a serious issue. Drops are something that you write up and you find out why it happened and how it happened and how to make sure it doesn't happen again. But you're pretty high up in there. Um, you know, this is what it looks like. Obviously, this is not, you know, my greasy old, uh, Malibu Classic. So I want to just show you a couple of uh, you know energy geek kind, kind kind of pictures just to give you a context of where the in wind industry is going. So this is where America gets its electricity. Um, we're still getting almost half our electricity by burning coal. And I'll tell you what, a lot of people here in Oregon figure, well, we got the dams on the Columbia and the Snake, and that's where we get all of our electricity. It's hydroelectric. Yeah, there's some problems with the fish, but it's mostly clean because you're not burning anything. No. Right? We get about half of our electricity from coal here in Oregon, and so we are all part of it. I mean, we can't just say, well, you know, that's New York, Illinois, California. I mean, we are part of this, too. Um, Give you a little sense of the growth of my industry, the wind industry. What I'm showing you here is this is just, this is an air turbine, this is the whole industry in, in the US. This is the growth curve, these gray bars of what's been installed. And even if you don't know what a megawatt is, right, you can see the shape of the curve. I'll tell you a little bit about what makes, uh, what has made the wind industry challenging over the last few years. And to, to understand what I mean, you've got to look not at the gray bars, but at the other ones. And they're real low, and it's probably not the best slide, but if you look, they kind of pop up, pop down, pop up, pop down, pop up, pop down, pop up, 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 down. Okay, so what's going on there? Not to get into a big policy discussion, make it brief, the major policy that the U.S. government has used to promote wind power is a tax credit. It's called the production tax credit. And what they do is they say, if you build a wind farm, we will give you a credit on your business income tax 